Hello, I'm working on my in-scale track layout today. This is an uh, uh, any rail layout, computer generated layout. And as you can see, I offset the center of the curve a little bit towards the edge of the board. The board's kind of a dog bone shaped. The board um, that I've built is kind of dog bone shaped. It goes in, it's only a foot wide here, down here, and then it flares back out. I am concerned about a couple of things now that I have full size to work with. Is uh, I don't want, I want my curves as close together as I can get them, but I don't want any possibility of a clash as long cars go past one another. I don't want them banging into each other. And since the curve's not to scale and the, and the rolling stock is, well, it's probably close to scale, but as far as the turning radius is and exactly where the pin for the bogey is and all that, it, the geometry is probably not exactly on to scale. So, what I want to do is I want to lay out the uh, the three curves and see what the clash will be and how much space I need to allow between them. When I laid this out, I offset the center of the radius, and I think I'm going to have to move that back. I did it because I wanted to minimize the amount of room I would have to add to the board right here. I'll have to add a, in a piece to support the track on the inside corner and uh, it'll be more than that because I'm going to move this whole thing over just a little bit to the center of the board. And once I work it out from the center of the board I'll be able to determine how far towards the edge I can move without having a big problem. So, first thing I want to do is find the center of the board. And what I did was I measured the width. I did not cut these uh, this plywood. I had it cut at the home store. It's 35 and 7 eighths. Well, it's really 35 and 15 sixteenths going this way. So I made a mark that was halfway, 18 and a 32 or so. And then on going the other way, let's see if you can see this. You can't. Oop, wrong way. There. Here's my tape measure. If I measure it this way, it is uh, 36 and a quarter, which would be 18 and an eighth to the middle. And I measured and made a mark at 18 and an eighth. And I used my square to project that line out to the middle. And the two lines cross right there. So that's the very center of this board, or very nearly so. It may not be precisely within thousandths or anything, but it's it's probably within a sixteenth. Now to swing arcs on this, I know that my inside radius is going to be 13.1 inches. And I have one piece of set track, Pico set track, that's 13.1. I have more on the way. Most of the action is going to be down here, so I think I'll move the camera to this end. I don't have a fancy beam compass, so I'm using a batten. And um, once I located the center of, the, of this, uh, this end, I marked it and I put a nail through the batten right at the center point and now 
uh, I'm, I've measured out the 13.1 inches or approximately 13.1 something less than an eighth and more than uh, 15 sixteenths and that's uh, my approximate mark now I'm going to drill a hole right there in the middle of this batten so I can put my pencil in and draw the arc for the for my uh, center, my inside track, which is a Pico set track, 13.1 inch radius. So and now I have to find a drill bit. Oh wait, I think I have one over here. The thing I'm really after is the distance between the tracks. So whether this is exactly right or not is not that critical. Let's see if it lines up. Oh yeah, that's close enough. It looks good. It's on the center line. I'll extend the, the arc a little bit more. I'm drawing on this paper because I want to preserve the information that I uh, glean from this. So if this is here, I will tape that down so it can't move. or can't move much, we'll put it that way. And here, these are the two cars I've picked out. They're uh, Santa Fe early sleepers before Santa, Santa Fe went to the Superliners. Okay, so we've got that laid out. Now the question is, how much space are we going to need To allow so that there's no clash and to do that I will need one of these on both tracks that looks to me about as close as I would want to get so I'll mark the center of the track And maybe we could tape it down for a better, a better test. Tapes over here. One could nail it down, I guess. But this does not need to be permanent. It just needs to be as accurate as we can get it within, you know, reason. Because I'm going to allow a pretty decent safety margin. Gonna move my tape down and give myself a little bit more room. There we go. Now that's about an well, it's about a sixteenth at the, at the closest point. That's probably not quite enough. So the mark I just made is not accurate. We're gonna move out just a little bit. where we have about an eighth. There. 
Well, this uh, this bogey might not there. Definitely on the track now. And that leaves us a good eight. It would have to rock quite a bit to clash. Although, I don't know, maybe we should leave a little more. We'll come out another eighth. When I did this for Farland, I had a track gauge that I could use to make sure that uh, I was accurately the right distance apart. And once I get this fairly close, I will actually measure the gap along here and to be certain that it's really, yeah, that's that's about a quarter of an inch. That's, uh, I think that's adequate. So we'll take the gap between the tracks right, right there and say that's probably about right. So my, my arc, maximum arc, is right there. For the outside and for the inside, it's right there. This one is there. Well, I don't really care about the inside because. There won't be a track over there. So these are, that's the allowance between the arcs that the, uh, that these make. At their widest points. Oh, I'm off the track again. I think I ran over the tape. There we go. There. That's pretty darn good. And that might be just a little bit too narrow. I want that to be a quarter of an inch. I think I allowed uh, three eighths or even maybe a half an inch on the uh, on Farland, but the the sway of those double O cars is a lot moves a lot further than the sway on an in scale car. A 1 to 160 scale car. So I think we're good. I think I'll widen that out just a little bit. I can measure that now and um, and set up set up the radius on this to draw it. And I'll probably draw since I'm going to be using Woodland Scenics track bed. Here, I'll show you some of that. If you're not familiar. Oopsie, banging around. I'm going to be using this. It's foam and the track and the track bed will all be glued. There'll be no nails. Well, I may use a nail or two at the joins. This is foam and this will acoustically isolate the track from the board. Uh, so that I can hear the wheels instead of the reverberation of the board like it's running over a guitar top or something. Just like Farland. And this will all be glued with uh, Woodland Scenics foam tack glue.
which stays flexible. I think that uh, copy deck is, a, is somewhat the same, that it stays flexible. I think it's a different whole uh, chemistry, but I think there are some similarities to copy decks from what I gather, because I've never seen any and never used any. But I, I know people use that in the UK. And I'm going to be using foam tack glue, which comes in a bottle kind of like this. It's about uh, $18, 19 a bottle, but it goes a long, long ways because you don't need very much of it. You just need a, the thinnest layer of it. And if the thinner you put it on, the better because it, it holds in sheer really well. But in tinsel, when you peel it off, it pops right off. So if you want to move your track later, it's not a problem. You just peel it right up. And I've, I've peeled a uh, track bed up on Farland that's been down for years, you know, and it just comes right back up. So I think we've, uh, I think we've done what we need to do here. So the next thing to do is to measure these marks and translate those and drill holes uh, that mate with the center line of the track to meet those marks. And I will draw the center line in. I will also draw the both sides of the Woodland Scenics track bed on to the board so that when I lay it, I know exactly where it goes. Okay, I'll be right back. Now, as you may have surmised, this outer track could actually be a little closer and still not run the danger of clash. But I'm not going to do that. I want them to be evenly spaced. And the inside ones are the worst case, so these uh, the outside will just put it the same difference, the same distance apart. My caliper. My wife gave me this once, I think for an anniversary gift. Very generous of her. I use it all the time. I use it constantly. So if I get the difference between the inside of one track and the inside of the other, I'll know the difference in the radius. That's pretty accurate. So then center line, and that looks good. I'll just punch a little hole there. And we'll drill a drill a hole where I'm going to want the pencil to be. And there are our three tracks. Well, can't reach the paper. So I, I know what I need to know now. I can take the track off, and get it out of the way. since I'm going to have to draw on it now. And there are my three arcs spaced out appropriately. Checking. As close as I, as I need to be and I've aired um, for the sake of uh, making it a little bit more spacious, a little less uh, confined. What I've determined here is with the track spacing as shown, as determined, that um, the uh, 
I have about an eighth of an inch between the road beds, the two road beds. That's the distance between the two road beds right there. So they'll be here and here and here. I will not be able to drill holes that close together. So I will mark the roadbed on this track and this track and then I will eyeball it to be even between the two. And I think that'll be fine. This doesn't have to be dead on. It needs to be smooth and this inside one needs to be very accurate because the other two depend on it. And I think we're plenty accurate on this hole, the inside hole. So now what I need to do is drill a hole for the outside of the roadbed on the outside track, the out, I mean the inside of the roadbed on the outside track, and the outside of the roadbed on the outside track, the inside of the roadbed on the inside track, and the outside of the roadbed on the, on the inside track, so that I can then draw those on the paper and eventually on the board itself. So I will do that. Okay, a little side note. <clears throat> now that I see the geometry, I'm going to move this outside track over three quarters of an inch. So it'll be around there. I think that'll be plenty of space. I can always put a little batten up along here to make sure that nothing hits the floor. in the case of a derailment, which do happen. Not very often, but they do happen. So I'm going to move my pin before I start drawing the arcs three quarters of an inch towards the edge. And then I'll start drawing. So if it looks different than what you've been seeing here, you'll know why. So in order to transfer the lines down along the side of the board to the other end, I've made myself a little jig or guide, gauge, sort of a story stick, I guess. And I drilled holes that correspond to the distance between the edge of the table and where the... Um, track bed is going to go so that I can follow these. I can run this along the edge and um, put a pencil in there and transfer those lines all the way down to the other end. That way it's quick and accurate.
copy of my little drawing of the spacing. And uh, then with the original, I cut out templates of the inner and outer trackpad circles, which will help me when I get over here and I rejoin and parallel the three tracks going down the, the long straightaway. So that's what I'm working on now. I'm over here. I'm about to decide where I want the the new three tracks, the ones that come across and sweep around and then turn to go down that way. Try to decide where they are. And once I know that, then I can use these templates to uh, to trace and lay out the curve. tonight it's so easy laying this stuff it doesn't take long for it to set up either not long at all the pins just have to hold it a little bit till the glue starts to grab then you can pull the pins and the pins don't really go into the wood so much is they just nick it. Just a little nick. Mostly on the curves. So I started there, not quite where the curve starts, so that I can smoothly go into the curve. It's never good to end and start on a curve with this stuff. <laughs> 